This week on Modern Mound Man, it's all about the brass, baby. This week I'm going to feature two different videos as it pertains to brass and reloading. Be sure to check out my up and coming episode about 50 Beowulf brass and why Starline brass is superior to the brass that you get with your factory loaded Alexander Arms ammunition. Today I'm going to show you how to form 375 Stalker brass out of 308 brass. Now this process will work the same for any other brass that comes from the 308 family, so for instance 243, 65 Creedmoor, so on and so forth. Anything that is parent cased by the 308, this same process will work for it. But real quick, before we jump in, I want to give two quick shout outs to two different companies. One, I want to give a quick shout out to Blue Ridge Brass, my boy Austin over there. Blue Ridge Brass is where I bought the once fired 308 brass. First of all, I, I love their company because they treat their customers right. There was a lot of great communication between he and I as I went into purchasing this, and he even made a special trip into Roanoke to meet me to make the sale. The second thing I like about Blue Ridge Brass is, man, he is building his business the right way. He said, you know what, I'm not gonna go into debt. I'm gonna build it a little bit at a time, and he's doing it, man, he's building his business. So if you are a reloader, be sure to check out his website, look at uh, the deals they have there, man, they are competitive with any of the other once fired brass companies, but great guy, great company, go check them out. The other shout out I want to give today is the jig that I'm going to be using it comes from 3D Reloading, another family business. The guy has a 3D printer and he builds all kinds of jigs and other types of uh, polymer items that you might use in reloading. Uh, nifty little things that you would never thought you would have needed for reloading, but once you saw him using it, you're like, I need one of those. Today, I definitely need one of these jigs in order to cut the 308 brass correctly. If you're not familiar with the 375 Stalker, the easiest way to explain it to somebody, it's like the 300 Blackout and the 458 SOCOM had a baby. You'll see as we form this brass how reminiscent this is of the 300 Blackout. But when you look at the size of the case and you look at the size of the pill we're putting in this thing, it's going to remind you a little bit of the 458 SOCOM. So think of it like a 300 Blackout on steroids or a 458 SOCOM with a way better ballistic coefficient. This is going to be good for both hunting and suppressed shooting and a bunch of other things. I'm really looking forward to getting this thing out in the field and doing some blasting with it with you guys and just really pushing it to see like how subsonic we can make it, how uh, fast and far we can shoot, various things like that. So let's jump into this. All right, so get your little jig hooked up there in your Harbor Freight chop saw. And something that's going to be important, remember to always wear your safety glasses. Position your brass in there. And one of the things that I always try to make sure to do when I position the brass in there is hold it to the back and don't let it like jiggle forward. It's, it's got a little cleat in there that should hold it in place, but you know what? Just a little extra pressure never hurt anybody. <laughs> make that cut. All right, your cut length should land you somewhere between 1.56 and 1.57. So there we are. Let's see if I can get it focus in. Nope. Right there, 1.56. Now you may ask why, why the variance between 1.56 and 1.57. What you're going to find when you form the brass, depending on the type of brass you have, um, some being thicker, some being thinner, the forming of the brass will actually cause it to grow a little bit. So you want to make sure you, you, you know what your brass does when it gets formed. I like to, right after I cut the brass, give it a quick little chamfer. Um, just because I'm about to put it inside that die over there, I don't want to get just a bunch of brass particles caught up in my die. Give it a little grease on my finger here. Then we'll 
grease grease it up real good because you're forming it so you want to make it extra greasy a little grease on it there from okay all right let's come over to the press this is my cool little homebrew die here as many of you know I was in on the very first stages of the 375 stalker project and uh, this was one that Steve Saturn made for me just to get me started however since that time they have made some Hornady dies so you can go buy those on uh, the Saturn barrels website as well but just get, stick this little uh, guy in here like that we'll run them right up There, there's one. Just for good measure, I'll show you a second one. Nice and firm in there. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm forming brass, I like to just give it a second little go, just in case. All right. So now you, you see the difference there with the, the shoulder and the neck to it, whereas before it was just a straight wall, basically case. So let's uh, we'll size them up, see how we're doing. What we're looking for is about 159 at the form point, and bingo, we got 159 there. So the your your end product case, you want it to be 1.58. So I, I leave it at 1.59 when it comes off of the press, so that way you can put it there in the the good old brass trimmer and uh, give it a good trim. And that's how you turn 308 brass into 375 stalker brass. You know, as much as I enjoy sharing my hobbies with you, I'd much rather share it with my children. So, y'all take a look real quick and how much fun it is to involve your kids in these processes. And you put, you put the safety glasses on. Watch this, buddy. God bless you and go take your mountain.